tonight, live from the Inspire Theater on the corner of Las Vegas Boulevard and Fremont Street in the heart of fabulous downtown Las Vegas, we present the Downtown Podcast. Starring your host, Dylan Jorgensen, your co-host, Bonnie Gore, Jason Outlaw, and music by yours truly, DJ Lenny Love Alfonso. Tonight's guest, renewing their vows, downtowners Heidi and Chad. Owner of Flora Pop, Victoria Hogan. Comedy by Brandon Donnelly. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for the man who hasn't counted half of Bernie Sanders' votes, Mr. Jason Outlaw. DJ Lenny Alfonso, let's hear it for him, huh? Yes! Yes! How you doing, Lenny? You doing all right? I feel awesome, thank you. You feel awesome. Yes, indeed. Good stuff. How are you guys doing? That's more important. Yes! Um, Hillary Clinton replied to a negative tweet from Donald Trump. That's right. Saying uh, Trump should delete his account. That's right. Because no one knows how to delete things off the internet better than Hillary Clinton. <laughs> You hit the button. You hit the button. <laughs> a 500-pound alligator that was found with a human body in his mouth has been captured. And that's right. He has been captured. And that's right. He was let off with a warning. They just told Chris Christie he shouldn't eat humans. <laughs> He's going to be vice president, I'm saying. I'm just saying. Get ready, guys. Uh, Britain's loneliest dog is having its day in the sun, that's right. This dog was named the loneliest dog by the media after it spent six years in a shelter, that's right. 18,000 visitors passed it by and rejected the dog, and uh, this dog has landed a new role in the new Transformers movie. That's right, yes. Yes, they do have a lot in common because no one wants to see Transformers either. <laughs> I knew that one was coming. <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> Oh, man. A, uh, a mother was fatally stabbed by an umbrella that was caught in a gust of wind at the beach this weekend, which goes to show you not everyone can stand under Rihanna's umbrella, Ella, Ella. No? Is that the, is that the, Ella? Ella? You guys know that song? I don't know. I don't know. All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, all right, so uh, we actually, we have the first ever curling controversy. You guys know what curling is, where they get down and they, yeah. yes. Um, it's over a high-tech brooms in the sport. That's right. If they were wondering where these brooms on performance-enhancing drugs came from, just ask Maria Sharapova. <laughs> that guy heard it in the news. She, she just got, she got suspended two years for doping. Yes, that's what it was. All right, so anyone else hear that? No, just that guy. All right, solid. All right. <laughs> All right, guys. Hey, we got a wonderful show for you guys. Give it up for DJ Lenny Alfonso! <laughs> entrepreneur who's a florist, a pop-up wedding event planner, as well as an officiant. We're actually going to be officiating a wedding here tonight, which is why I wore my favorite bridesmaid's dress. <laughs> now, from Flora Pop, let's welcome Victoria Hogan. <laughs> Hi. Have a seat in our little living room. So, you know everything about weddings, or at least the weddings that you put on, which are very cool because I follow you on social media, so I already know a little bit about you before you came on. Thanks. Tell me a little bit how you got started. You, you are a local entrepreneur. Was it the flowers or the wedding first? Uh, definitely the flowers first. Okay, yeah. and your floral arrangements are beautiful. They're actually, I've seen them all over town, especially at Park on Fremont, mm -hmm. right? That's where I got started when I, when I moved back here, but my business actually started in Prospect Park, Brooklyn. Um, I used to make bouquets and ride around with my bicycle. Is that where you're from? No. I'm from Alabama. Oh! I don't know if you so can you've been all over the world? <laughs> Just the United States. Oh, that's all. <laughs> that's my world, so... <laughs> Just kidding. But no, it's... So you started off doing floral arrangements, and at what point did you... Did a couple approach you about 
officiating their wedding or? No, um, I actually had been planning to open a flower shop and another flower shop opened and I was sort of challenged to think about my business differently. Um, and I saw a gap in the market and I decided to kind of go out on my own and do it my way. So one of the things that I really love about you, which is why I started following you on social media, and this is the first time we've met in person, is I have an obsession with vintage camping trailers. Oh, okay. uh, and you use you use them, or at least one. You've used several, though, right? I've seen Airstreams, and then you have that other cute little pop-up trailer right. as well. Can you talk about some of the weddings you do and kind of the culture behind it? Sure. Um, I get a lot of people from overseas, uh, a lot of Europeans, uh, Australians. Um, they're really coming to Vegas to do two things. Their, their main mission is to get married, but they're also having their honeymoon. Okay. And a lot of times they'll road trip from Los Angeles to Arizona. You know, they'll see you know, sort of all of the national parks along the way, and then they come and meet me, and they get married in a really intimate desert setting. Um, surrounding Las Vegas or Palm Springs, Joshua Tree. Right, so these are some of the backgrounds. It's like usually just you and the couple, right? And the photographer. And the photographer, yes. Somebody's taking these pictures. Mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, a few of their friends, but it's mostly under 10 people usually. Yeah, I see some beautiful shots out at Red Rock and that sort of thing as well. Um, have you had any like weird weddings? Like, have you had anybody have cold feet or have you ever like, actually started to meet a couple and thought, maybe this isn't going to work out? Never, actually, <laughs> no. no. I think I've weeded out all the brides with cold feet, and I don't get bridezillas either. You don't get bridezillas? No. Nice. No. So yeah, you win at the event planning, wedding <laughs> planning world, right? I figured out the right formula, I think. And what is that? I mean, um, you don't have to give away all your secrets, but um, like, what prevents that? I really thought about if I was going to get married, how would I want to do it? And I there had to be more people like me out there. Uh, so I get really chill, laid-back clients. And why? Why do you do really intimate um, pop-up weddings? And why the vintage trailers? Which is personally my favorite part. So. Um, well, initially, I actually built the teardrop myself. Um, it's modeled after a vintage trailer. And it right. was kind of uh, going to be my roadside flower stand. When I thought about it, it didn't really make sense. So I just put a bunch of chairs, champagne, all my fixins in there and it's become my mobile chapel. How fun. And are you just located here in Las Vegas or do you travel or do you have other shops in other cities? How does this work? Well, um, I started out in Las Vegas, but it slowly turned into everywhere, like the whole United States and, and abroad. Um, okay. I am expanding to the south and I have my southern girl right here. All right. And so my, my other right hand woman right next to her. Hi. Rachel and Holly. So you're kind of going back to your roots. You're heading back home a little bit, doing yes. some stuff back home. Mm -hmm. And how is the response there? Well, we're just kind of uh, starting to figure that out, but um, it's, it's in the works. So. Awesome. So do you have a favorite story? Like, do you have any how about a weird story? Because weddings in Vegas, everybody always thinks like, okay, it's a drive through Elvis wedding. Mm -hmm. um, well, do you have people like, have, you know, anything weird? Or you have unique stuff. Like, do you have anything? I mean, I would say Elvis related. I, I did a. Not Elvis, or okay. even not Elvis, like something on another spectrum. Because I think that's what people expect when they come to Vegas. Right. They expect like exactly. an Elvis. Like, Oh, there we go. Okay. There's a canoe? Um, yeah, so I actually had a couple, a few weeks ago, get married in a canoe out at Lake Mead. Oh. And then they And were you in the canoe with them? Um, no. But <laughs> we talked about it. It just, it just wasn't Yeah, three's logistic. a crowd. Yeah. <laughs> but they jumped in the water afterwards to take the plunge. You they know? did? Yeah. Oh, okay. So that was all part. Okay. I like that. <laughs> did you get in the water? Or you just I did. You did, too. The photographer did, too. So, I mean, I'm not... See, that's fun. I, would, I think that's a lot more fun than going through the drive through with Elvis, which is fine, too. But right. I think that's super cliche. Everybody comes to Vegas and is just like, oh, wear a super bright pink, you know, dress and get married. Right. But, I mean, that's fine, too. I'll take those clients, but I typically don't attract them. So, right. you know. So, and how, what, how do you attract the clients that you get? Um, you know, I as far as... Advertising goes, I, I, I don't really do any other than social media. It's That's just kind right. of word of mouth or blogs. But I just attract a lot of like-minded people. I can honestly say that every couple I've worked with has become friends. So we're going to uh, 
have a real wedding here on the mm -hmm. show up next. Right. I am the maid of honor, mm -hmm. and I am proud to be. So, <laughs> I'm, Victoria is actually going to be officiating the wedding right here before your eyes. You guys are all going to be witnesses. So speak now or forever hold your peace. <laughs> and um, if people want to find you, if rather you know, can, so can somebody find you to get flowers and or do a wedding, or are you just mostly weddings? I, I do both. Okay, so how can someone find you if they want to want to contact you? Floripop.com. Floripop.com. Mm -hmm. All right, Victoria. I'll see you in a little bit at the wedding. All right. <laughs>
sure. <laughs> My turn? Yes. Okay, let's see what happened here. <clears throat> I love you as much as bunnies. I'll be there for you when you get so old that your eyes droops and sags. I promise to always play bingo while you are cleaning the litter box. We don't have a cat. <clears throat> and lovingly look into your eyes the entire time. Never looking away, not for a moment. Your most fantabulastic <clears throat> in the morning when you first wake up. So handsome. I can't wait to have our first dance to the thong song. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be my Elvis. I'll be your Hillary. We may not be suited for horse husbandry, but we sure are suited for each other. I will love you from this day forward in sickness and in health until death do we part, unless you turn into a bumblebee. Then I am absolved of this binding contract. <laughs> so, Chad, do you take baby Boo Baba <laughs> to be your wife still? I do. <laughs> do you promise to coming her and going her? <laughs> As long as you both shall live? I do. <laughs> My parents are going to watch this. <laughs> so, Heidi. Yes? I sort of changed this a little bit. Uh oh. Do you take Chadley, lovey lover, yeah. to be your husband? Still? Sure. <laughs> Do you promise to deep sea dive with him and swipe right as long as you both shall live? Yeah. Yeah. Well, in that case, as sure as I am standing here and by the power vested in me by the Downtown Podcast. <laughs> I now pronounce you Baby Dragon. Which one of you is Baby Dragon? <laughs> and Charles Manson. Oh, <laughs> man! But please, uh, most importantly, you must remember that whatever twerks in Vegas stays in Vegas. <laughs> All right, I guess we're staying here then. <laughs> You may kiss your Charles Manson.